Um, first, this is my first time giving my testimony. Second, I'm a little nervous. I see a bunch of people that have been right where I am. And third, the story that I hope to share with y'all is from D Darkness Faith by Nurturing the Seeds Within. And I have some pictures to kind of let y'all see my family and be able to tell some of my story as we go through. This is my wonderful husband, Tim, and my oldest daughter, Bobby. She lives in San Diego, California. This is my daughter, Mandy, my second oldest child. Um, she lives in Moultrie now. She just moved from Auburn. This is Timothy and my new daughter-in-law, Erica. Um, he lives here in Moultrie. Cairo, excuse me. Woo, I went back like eight years. Sorry about that. This is Megan, Allen, Bryn, and Eli, and they live here in Cairo, Wiggum. Let me be specific. Um, next is Amy. AJ, Trudy, and Edith. This is our little baby we just had back in July that uh, had the rough start. That's coming out of the darkness into the light. Let's, let's remember, okay? Out of the darkness into the light. And this, <laughs> this is my daughter Lily and her husband Micah. And this is their angel baby. Theo, and then there's my wonderful partner in life who has, I'm going to need a tissue, I am a crier, so, um, uh, um, without him and God bringing him to me so that I could have somebody help me come up out of the soil and see the light. Um, oh, <laughs> and there's the triple trio threat. That's Bran, <laughs> that's Bran Eli, and Trudy. And it's really hard to get everybody together all at one time. I'm sure y'all don't know anything about that. But that was Trudy's birthday party. All the girls... Um, this was, what holiday was this? Father's Day? Father's Day. This is Father's Day. And, uh, or Mother's Day. Mother's Day. And um, right to left, my son Josh was in this picture. It's very hard to get a young 20-something male to give me a picture by himself. So that's Mandy, Josh, me, Tim, Lily, Amy, Trudy, and AJ. And then Mother's Day again, or, yeah, Mother's Day. That's Timothy, the big old teddy bear on the right. And then Alan, Megan, Erica, Mandy, Eli, Bryn, and my wonderful husband, Tim. Um, our first scripture is going to be in Matthew 17:20. And it's going to be helping relate my story of embarking on my transformative journey from darkness to light. God um, put me in a, um, well, let's just read this. Because you're not yet taking God seriously, said Jesus, the simple truth is that if you had a mere kernel of faith, a poppy seed, say, you would tell this mountain move, and it would move. There is nothing you would not be able to tackle because he gives you strength to move as long as you have faith. And that faith can be just the speck of a seed, of a mustard seed. Um, I was born in Warner Robins. My um, 
mother and father were in the civil service. They moved around a lot. My mother was disabled. So I, I grew up in a home that was very dysfunctional. Um, as soon as I was able to see over the edge of the bed, I became the caretaker. She would have seizures, she would have sores, and the way I was brought up, that was normal. That's what you did. You took care of. Um, so instilled in me is the opportunity to take care of people when they're sick. And it's probably why I became a nurse, but I ran from it for several years. Um, with my family, it was very dark. Um, there was a lot of demonstrative things brought to me. I was not brought up in church. I didn't start going to church until I was like 18 and then I stopped. And then I tried it again at 21 and I stopped. Then I had my daughter Bobby and I put her in a Christian academy hoping that maybe God would reach her. And then we did that for a year or two and it stopped. And um, kind of skipped over some stuff there. Um, I was told at 13 that I'd never have kids. So five of the seven that you saw are mine. So praise God. You know, doctors don't know everything because I had polycystic ovary syndrome. And they said, you probably won't ever have kids. And it um, took a minute to get Bobby. We had Bobby. And seven years later, I had Randy. So there was, the pro there was that barren period in a time of darkness. But then Mandy came to my life, and there was my light again. So God always showed me a light to look forward to. He was always faithful to me even though I didn't know him yet. He's still blessing me. He's still putting favor on me, and he's still showing me things every day, every day. Um, it says that Jesus um, looks for those to use that are lost and broken and heavy-hearted. I didn't know that I was lost or broken or heavy-hearted because the way that I grew up was the way that I grew up. I didn't have friends that I went and spent the night with. I didn't have birthday parties. I didn't, I didn't know what real love was. I was under such an oppression or a depression of being kept in the dark because I had to stay at home with my mother. Um, my dad traveled. He would go out of town, and I lived in a small town, so whenever she needed something at 13, 14 years of age, I would drive the car. I remember them days. Um, to get her medicine or to go get her food or, you know. Um, oftentimes, I was the one that had to call and get help for my mother, you know, at seven and eight years of age, not knowing a whole lot about what was going on. At seven or eight, I didn't know what a seizure was. Do I know what a seizure is today? Do I know that a seizure can kill you? Yes. But at seven, I didn't. So by God's favor, even though I didn't know him, he was there with me. And I didn't know it at the time. So I didn't know until I knew. And now I know. Hallelujah. Right? So as, um, um, let's see, where do I want to go to now, Lord? Let it be you, oh God. Uh, I went through my first marriage, still not knowing God, my second marriage, 
still not knowing God. And in 2015, I went to um, an awakening at Heritage Church in Moultrie, Georgia. I was 50 years old. I had just had bilateral cataract surgery. 48 day, no, hmm. Three months later, I had my thyroid removed. 48 days later, I had emergency surgery. Um, and this lady sitting back here, Michelle Newsom, um, was there for that. And that was a very dark, dark time in my life. And had, she, had God not brought her to me so that I would have a light to see, I wouldn't be here. And she knows it. Um, I recovered from the surgery, and um, six or seven months later, I had um, I had been looking in the wrong places for love. I anybody that would talk to me, I'd pretty much just reach out for him because I was in such a dark spot after my second divorce that I needed help. And God sent people to help me. And I went away for a while and came back much better than I went in because God is so good. <laughs> he is so good. Um had a reference, John 12. I have come as light. When I came out, Michelle was there. And she said, God's got you. He sees you. And I have always leaned on that, that God's got me, that he sees me, even though there, I was in such a dark spot for 50 years. That's a long time. That's a long time, 50 years, because I didn't know. But now I know that my Savior loves me, that he sees me. He sees you. He loves you. His grace and his mercy goes far beyond anything you've ever done in your life. If there's a situation, if you have a need, if you need me or someone to come alongside of you, I'll be that person to come along and hold them arms up so that you can praise. I'll be that person that'll come along and pray. Um, I meant to get the pictures of the five babies because um, they were all in darkness, right? They were in the womb, and the womb is dark, are they not? And when they're born, they're brought into the light, are they not? Even though I lost mine, God's still good. God's still good. But he brought five babies that I didn't know into my life to bring to y'all, for which we prayed for, not me, but we prayed for, and they are all living testimonies of what prayer can do. If you come along, if you just come along in agreement with what I say, as long as you have your discernment to understand that it's of God's will. It wasn't God's will for Theo, but it was for these five babies, and I give him praise for that because they came out of darkness and into light. Just like with Christmas coming up, I heard a... Um, um, sermon that said from the cradle to the grave and Jesus was born in a manger do you think they had city lights in the manger no but there was a what in the sky a star and there was his light right and then he went from the cradle to the cross and he was put in a tomb and went into hell so that I can have everlasting. I could have everlasting 
even though I never thought that I was worthy enough for him to go to that depth. But Don, he went there for you. Ms. Sharon, he went there for you. He loves us that much that God couldn't stand the pain of his son hanging on the cross that he turned his head and it went dark. But what happened three days later? Somebody better jump up. What happened three days later? Glory to God, right? The light. Did the light not come forth? Did we not receive mercy? Did we not receive grace? For God so loved us that he sent his only begotten son. That's those, uh, somebody help me, who believe shall have what? Everlasting life. Let's get up and give him some praise for that. That is amazing that God will do that. That he loves you so much that he will sacrifice his son. I lost my grandson and I don't understand, but God sent his son to give us everlasting life because he loved us. And that's all this Bible is about, is about love. That's all it is, is love. I, I love you, and I love you, and I love you, and I love you, Ethan. And I love you way back there in the back, Dorothy. But that's what, I didn't know I was going to walk around this kind of odd. Um, um, <clears throat> out of the darkness and into the light. Um, in that sermon that I was hearing as well, not only was he born into darkness, and then God provided the light so that all would know that he was here. And I'm going to coin Stephen Furtick's um, message was, the pajamas was a prophecy. The pajamas was a prophecy. And it's because he was born from dark to light. He was swaddled in linens, correct? She swaddled him in linens because she had nothing else. What was in the tomb? Linens. And what else happened after the darkness? The stone rolled away and the light came in. And there he was. That's my God too, Teresa. My God too. Is he not amazing? That he loves us that much. That he used a baby to prophesy that my pajamas, as Stephen said, um, were going to show us the way to who our God is. And he's so loving and so kind and so gracious. But... I was going to use a mustard seed thing, and now I've just completely, because I liked what God was telling me, I was trying to heed to that Holy Spirit. I am heeding, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, so just having the faith of a mustard seed. You can plant a mustard seed in... Um, a rocky path and it will not get what it needs and it'll wither up and die. You can plant it amongst the, thro the thorns. Doug and I talked about this earlier right before I came up to speak that the thorns will try to strangle them out but God's going to reach down and let me grow and I'm still growing every day. Every day. And then Another reason we should jump up is he gave us some good soil. He gave us the word. He gave us instruction on how to love Miss Elaine. They gave us instructions on how to be there for each other, Miss Margaret. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what that Bible is about. It's about going out and loving people. And one of my inspirations is Michelle because her mama taught her how to love. And because I came through those situations with you, because God was so gracious to bring you to my life so that I could learn 
how to love because I didn't know how to love. I, I, I had come from a situation where love was demonstrated by action or by service. That's the word I was looking for, by service. Let me do what I can do for you. And God expects nothing more than for you to just accept him and believe who he is. Right? Exactly. Right. And that's all about a two-way street of relation. It's just communicating to him all the time. I'm the two o'clock in the morning person that wakes up and goes, God, I don't know who it is. Tim will tell you. And I'm like, I lay there for a minute, especially if I wake up singing. Any of y'all ever experienced that? You wake up and you got a song going and I'm like, well, let me catch up because I didn't know I was singing. But um, it's just amazing how I see that God lowered the bar to come and get me out of the soil that wasn't going to grow anything into a soil where that seed was planted and roots were going to be established. And my kids are learning about God now a lot earlier than I did. But they're learning about God now. They're learning. They see a relationship with my husband and I that they have never seen before, have they, Michelle? Never. Because I didn't know how to love, and I didn't know how to receive love. But that man right there, God brought him to me. And Michelle will tell you, that's one of my biggest blessings in my life. One of them. I got seven of them. Actually, I got nine, ten, twelve of them. So, um... God is so good. So wherever you are in your life, whatever it is you feel like you need, God is there. All you have to do is ask for him to come to you and ask for forgiveness and to help you take that step. And it may not be immediate. You may not feel anything immediately. But I promise you God's going to bring somebody to you and it's going to be in little ways, just like a butterfly. A butterfly is a caterpillar, and it goes up into its cocoon, and it's where? In the dark. And then when it comes out, glory to the Lord, it's in the light. He's fluttering around in the light. So just because you feel like you're in a dark spot, know that you're not alone. Know that God is there. Because I hope that my word has told you that if you didn't know, you what? You know now. God loves you. And he loves me. And he has helped me through where I didn't think there was anybody there. It's just like the poem of the footprints in the sand. I turned around and I looked and all I saw was one. I thought it was me. But now that I know, I know that it was my God and not me. Amen. Amen. I thank you so much for listening to me. Um, I'd like to pray for us. If there's anybody here that doesn't know God, if you're willing, I would love to pray for you. Um, just know that he's here and that he's amazing and that he can heal you. He can heal you mentally, been there. Body, been there. Spirit, been there. Completely restrained. I came out of the dark and into the light. I was a seed that was planted 50 plus years ago. And I'm growing every day. Every day. I'm not perfect by any means. I'm, you know, I can't even think of all this stuff I've done wrong today. But I already know that when I go home, I'm going to ask. I hope I'm doing your will. And forgive me of where I didn't do your will. Because that's what I'm about. I'm about loving. And if you know me really, really close, do you not know? Do you not know? 
Do you not know? I can't see Sally. Do you not know? Love. Love. That's all I know how to do. I didn't before, but now I do. And I praise God for it. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God, we're going to close out with this song. Uh, Peggy, did you want to close out in prayer? Did you already pray? Okay. Um, let's let Peggy finish out then. Will y'all stand, please? Yes, Jesus, you are here. In the darkness to the light, I will worship you. <laughs> Y'all go ahead. <laughs> Do you have the video, Sally? Your presence is here. Your spirit is here. And Lord, it feels so fresh. It feels so fresh to step out from that darkness, Lord. I'm so thankful that you reached down, that you reached down and you brought me up. And Lord, that you brought us all up. But Father God, we just thank you, Jesus. We just thank you for who you are, God. Lord, we just love you. Your blessings abound far greater than I ever expected in my life, Lord. And Lord, I just pray for everybody here tonight, Lord. For those that couldn't make it tonight, Lord. We're reaching out through airwaves, oh God. And you're going to use it to bless. You're going to use it to bless. There's somebody that needs it. They're alone. They're broken. And they need you. And Lord, we lift them up to you. Father God, for those that are sick, for those that are sick in mind, sick in body, and sick in spirit. Father God, you are there. You are with them. Yes, Lord, you're turning those lives around, and we thank you, Jesus. We pray that you would be with everybody as they travel home, oh God, that there would be a hedge of protection around them, oh God. God, for you are so worthy to be praised so worthy to be praised lord we just love you we love you lord and we lift up our hearts our hands and our minds and know that you are the way maker in your name i pray amen
Praise God. Well, Lord, as we go out, we go out with joy, Lord. We look to you, Lord, the author and the finisher of our faith, Lord. We follow your footsteps, Lord. We follow you as dear children, Lord, and we speak the name of Jesus everywhere we go. We give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.